guys, this is Carrie, and today I'm going to teach you a little bit about the learning journey. I'm also going to share with you how to teach this lesson, but before I do that, I want to share with you how I actually built my keynote presentation. Before I build any keynote presentation, I enjoy taking a look at my lesson plan and my learning leader information. Then I get kind of a game plan. I look at it and I decide what is my point A, my point B, and my point C going to be. From there, I like to kind of look and decide on what the most important need to know information is. That will be the meat and potatoes of my presentation. All the details about uh, those points and some of the nice to know information will really be what I'm going to discuss as I present. I don't need to put all of that onto my keynote slides. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first slide that I have here. I obviously have a title text, so the learning journey. Underneath it, I have a little paragraph that I found on a Paul Mitchell the School's website. This is kind of my overview. And then at the bottom, I have my actual agenda. So I have the thinking process, which would be my point A. This is also known as grouper or stringer. Uh, my point B is going to be multiple intelligence. And then my, oh, also VAC is going to be in my point B as well. And then my point C will be the learning cycle and learning styles. You'll notice that I also have some fun little review activities here, and I'll show that to you guys a little bit later. Now, what I'd like to do is show you how I lay out my slides, because I kind of do that first, and then I start dropping in information and titles. So the first thing that I do is I start with my point A, which is the thinking process, and then I like to go ahead and create a title page for that. I haven't put in any information yet, I just like to pop in the thinking process. Next, I go to my point B, which is multiple intelligence and VAC. So from there, I'll go ahead and drop in a title page for multiple intelligence and for VAC or VAK. And then I go into my next, uh, which is going to be learning cycle and learning styles. And I go ahead and I drop in those titles as well. So at this point, I only have a few slides to get started. From there in each uh, part of the lesson, I have to decide how much information do I need to cover. So in the thinking process, I know that I have grouper and stringer, so I'll need two additional slides. When it comes to multiple intelligence, I know that I have at least seven slides. I did go ahead and do an eighth multiple intelligence, and um, that's because there's a new one called naturalistic. This doesn't really fall into our Paul Mitchell system because it has to do with learning outdoors and enjoying the outdoors. I still talk about it, but because it's not involved in classes, you guys don't have to discuss this eighth multiple intelligence. All right, so now let's talk about the interactive portion of my keynote. On my home page, what I've done is created little buttons or little tabs, and what these tabs do is they actually link me to those title slides. So, for instance, if I push play and I come down to the thinking process, I can actually go ahead and click that and it will jump me to the thinking process. From here, I've got little tabs at the bottom of this slide, and I can go ahead and choose to click grouper or stringer and it will jump me quickly to those slides. I can also choose a home page button and come back to the very beginning. Now let's talk about how I built those little buttons. The ones on my main screen look like kind of like little text bubbles and most little buttons that you build or sometimes little visuals can really easily be created by using shapes. So if I come up here I can choose this little text button or text bubble and I can go ahead and make it any size I want to make it. Maybe I just want one big one on the screen. Okay. Uh, if I want to create the little white center like I have here, then I just choose another shape. I'm going to go ahead and choose a circle or a, and, you know, make it into an oval shape. And then I can choose to put a color to it. So once I've clicked this, I'm going to come right over here and I can click any of these little colors because I'm under format and I'm under style. Okay, so maybe I want to have a yellow bubble within my bubble and maybe I want to make my background uh, green. Okay, now what I need to do is put a text inside of my bubble. So I'm going to choose text, move it to the center. And then I'm going to go ahead and type whatever I'd like. Let's say we have a grouper uh, activity somewhere within our keynote. 
So I'll go ahead and place that there. I can also double click it and choose to make my font a little bit larger if I need to, right? And then I can click my green bubble and then I can hold command uh, or I can just double tap and then hit my yellow bubble and my text button all at the same time. You'll notice that right now I have this little kind of square box around each one of these little items. That means that they're currently uh, together. Then if I click them or double tap them, I can choose to group them and that allows me to move my button around wherever I would like on this main slide. Let's say that I want to put it right up here in the corner and maybe it's too big so I just want to make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so I'm going to slap it right on top of my Palmetro logo. All right. Now, perhaps I want to go ahead and link this to uh, the activity slide. And let's just say that the slide lives, uh, or that the activity lives on slide 12 in this keynote. If I go ahead and click this button, I can choose to come down at the bottom and add link. And I can add link as a slide, so I can make it link to that slide number 12 activity. I can also link it to go to a web page such as a YouTube video that we need to stop and watch or I can link it to an email. All right? Let me get rid of this and I'll show you guys how these are linked. So if I look at multiple intelligence for instance, notice that I have just my text linked. Uh, you never want to link a group um, because then you're not able to open it up in a, a PDF handout and that can be really valuable because you can actually export these to PDF and when you do that you can airdrop those PDFs to your class of future professionals or uh, to your staff for training and then they're not able to edit the keynote but in PDF all of the links and activities will actually work and then they can open it up in something like Notability or in Adobe they can highlight right on top of the, your presentation um, or they can type in notes if they'd like to right Okay, so now I've got those tabs. I also have tabs on my other slides as well. So for my grouper and stringer slide here, I've got a tab. And if I take a look at that, I just created that using a shape. Again, I just built a little square. I sized it however I wanted to size it. Shrunk it down to make sure that it fits and that it looks aesthetically pleasing and has nice balance. Um, and then from there, I just added in my text. Pretty easy, right? Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at some different parts of this um, keynote. And so one part that's really important is going to be our color scheme. And I followed the Paul Mitchell branded keynote here. Uh, and if you notice, each one of my tabs is color coded. So if I choose multiple intelligence, for instance, that portion of my lesson, I've chosen to use the pink and purple uh, color scheme. If I go into the next part, which is VAC or VAK, I've chosen to use the yellow or the orange color scheme. And then the next one is going to be blue and so forth and so on. This is really valuable because what it does is as you teach this information, it kind of tells the learner that when the color changes, I'm moving on to a new piece of information and it helps their brain kind of adjust to absorbing new information. Pretty cool, right? Okay, some other things that you're going to see are going to be my visuals. So once I get my uh, title slides in for each one of my point A, B, or C, and then once I've kind of worked in what color scheme I'm going to use, uh, and I've built my little tabs, from there I like to start putting in visuals and putting in my need-to-know information, which again can be found in learning leader information and on your lesson plans. So for this slide that I have on the thinking process, you'll notice that I have a little group activity here. So anywhere I have an activity, I like to put in a little visual. And this just lets the class know that when they see this cute little light bulb, that we are going to have an activity. So I have three activities within my lesson. I have an activity for group or stringer. I have an activity right here, which is uh, multiple intelligence learning centers. Uh, for this, I've created seven learning centers that go around the room. I place the class into groups and they actually rotate while I play music. At each one of the learning centers, they do an activity based on that learning center or based on that multiple intelligence. So for instance, 
At the Musical Learning Center, I have some little musical instruments such as a tambourine and a little box with a wooden spoon that they can create a beat with to the music in the background. Um, at the Math Logic Learning Center, I have a little um, puzzle. It's really simple. It's just about 10 little puzzle pieces that they try and put together as a group. Um, they have some different steps to how to draw a turtle at the Spatial Learning Center by following a little um, diagram. So I have them do these activities and then it helps them to understand a little bit more about each one of the multiple intelligence. Uh, and it's also easier than just listening to us talk about what they are and what they mean. That can get a little bit boring. Okay, so next I also have some branded images here as well. So you'll notice that I have this grouper image right here. I placed a little red arrow on it just to kind of help um, encourage the learners to understand that we're talking about working from the top down. So just a little visual aid. With that, I just created it in shape. I went to my little arrow right here, and then I used my uh, format over on the side to make it a little bit bigger and to change it to red. Um, and then I've also found these images just out of the card book. So I've tried to use as many Paul Mitchell branded images as possible so that it matches uh, what our future professionals are seeing. When they flip through the first chapter of their uh, coloring book and they're looking at all their learning types, these visuals are going to be familiar to them. Or if you're printing the um, card book for them, the portions on the actual learning journey, they would be flipping through those cards as well. And so all of these little visuals are going to match what's on their cards. Um, the next thing is going to be some of my visuals that are more colorful. So for example, if I come to VAK, you're going to notice that I have a few little visuals here. I have an eye for my visual learners. I have uh, a little ear hearing music for my auditory learners. And I have a little hand under kinesthetic. And visuals really need to be used on purpose or with purpose and kind of sparingly. You don't want visuals to take over the whole presentation. You don't want them to be too distracting and you don't want them to have a whole lot of uh, movement and, and excitement. So for this, I just found these images just with a simple Google image search, really, really easy. But if you notice, there's consistency to my slides. They don't change. So on my first slide, I have text on the left. My visual learners prefer title text matches visual color tab at the bottom. So these are the same color. And then my eye is located on the right side. When I go to my next slide, it's the same exact thing. Auditory learners prefer. I have my activity and my sounds that they prefer. The color of my auditory learners prefer text matches my auditory button. And then my image is in the same location. And then it's the same thing for kinesthetic. Right? So it creates a consistency and a flow and it creates um, a, an amazing keynote presentation that's not distracting for our learners. Okay. All right, so now let's jump down here and let me share with you guys a couple of cool ways to build activities into your keynotes. Um, one thing that you can do is just write where to find the activities. So for my learning style slide, uh, you'll notice that I have what my learning what learning styles are and then at the bottom I have tabs to each one of those pages but then I also have an activity here and if you can create activities uh, using the tools that the future professionals already have it really will add a lot of value to them and to what they've invested in so for this activity it says discover your learning style they're gonna go to the business fundamentals iBook and to my brain chapter on page 62 from there, they can go ahead and take their little learning style quiz, and then you guys can discuss it in your classes. Really easy, but I won't forget about my activity because I build it into my keynote. Now, at the bottom, I've created a little um, quiz or like little activities that can be kind of fun and interactive. And I'm going to show you guys uh, first how I created it, and then I'll show you how it works. So uh, future professionals can come here and test their knowledge once you've talked about all of this information. And because I typically will go ahead and export this to a PDF and drop it to the classes uh, for the future professionals to use and follow along on their Career Connector tablets as I present it on my keynote, um, they can actually come right into these and, and 
jump right in. They can highlight, they can write right on them, um, and then it's a little bit more interactive as well. So the first activity that I have is called a true or false activity. So for this, I created a slide and it has instructions just in case they're not using a Career Connector tablet. I made the instructions so that they can also just use a piece of paper as well. So they're going to number a paper 1 to 10. They're going to identify the true statements and then they can click the answer key below to see how many statements they got right. Now the way that I built these little um, statements is simple. I came up to my shape and I grabbed a circle, I changed it to black, I enlarged it, and then I went ahead and popped a little bit of text on top. There's my text box, right? I can go ahead and change my text to white and then when I put it on top of my black circle, you can see it. Okay, I click, click, I click, and group. And now I can move this little button around anywhere I'd like to. So I started by doing that. I placed them on here and I made sure that they looked even and aesthetically pleasing. And then I went ahead and just add, added little text numbers as well. Pretty cute. So when the future professionals have this in a PDF, it's going to look like this for them. So they can number their page and write down you know which ones are true which ones are false and once they've completed the activity they can actually choose true or false answer key and they can see which ones they got correct so if you notice this says VAC stands for visual auditory and kinesthetic VAC does not stand for verbal auditory and kinesthetic pretty cool all right now let's take a look at our next activity and this is a crossword puzzle and I built this just by creating text boxes. I created my text box and I typed in a bunch of letters. And then once I did that, you can actually take your text box and just bring it down so that it's vertical. There we go. Right, and I can resize them as I needed. So I created a lot of long strings of text boxes. And I went here and I pasted them all next to each other. And then once I did that, I just clicked on my outside and I drug my mouse across everything and then I unclicked and then I tapped it and I grouped all of them together. So if I happen to ungroup it, you guys will notice how each one of these little strings is its own individual text box. And if I click, I can actually move just one of them out of the way. So you kind of build it from the ground up. I'm sure that you can also find a website to um, you know, build a crossword puzzle and you could probably just drop that in as an image as well. But I chose to go ahead and do it this way. So once I build in all those random letters, I went back and I put in words and changed them. So for instance, you can find grouper right here. So this is my text box or my word bank over here. So these are all the words that they're looking for. And then if we go ahead and push play, our future professionals can look at this in a PDF. They could highlight it, um, or you could even print this out if you wanted to print it out from the PDF page as well. And then if we go ahead down to the crossword answer key, I can click that, and it's linking it to a little master answer key, and then they can go ahead and test their knowledge and see how many they got right. Maybe you make it in a competition, give them three minutes, and then the first person in the class to get the most gets like a little toy or um, candy or something like that. So the next thing that you'll see here is that I have some blank slides kind of between these. And the reason that I did that was because if the future professionals are viewing this as a PDF, there's a good chance that they might be skipping ahead. We know that we have those drivers that just like to know everything. And if they skip ahead just a little bit and they kind of move their finger up, you don't want them to see the slide below and have it be the answer key, right? So I just move that down and out of the way. And that's pretty much it. So that's how I built my keynote for this presentation. And in the next video, I'm going to share with you guys a little bit about the learning journey and also how to teach it. So I'm going to talk more about uh, my open and my attention getter and my body and my clothes and kind of explain to you guys a little bit more about that. So thank you so much.